Hey guys, welcome to uh, Airbus Ground School 101. Just kidding. Um, so I put out a video, the A320 versus uh, the 737. What's it like flying both? And I kind of highlighted some safety features of the Airbus. And one of them that I brought up was um, Alpha Floor, which is a mode of the auto thrust. There was some debate back and forth. I don't know if I confuse people, but I figured I'd just make a video talking a little bit about Alpha Floor on the Airbus. Alpha Floor, it's not, I see a lot of people talking about it being a low speed protection. It's not low speed protection, it's high angle of attack protection. When the airplane enters Alpha Floor based on the data that it has from the facts, the flight augmentation computers, you're gonna get um, A dot floor, which stands for Alpha Floor on the FMAs in the upper left corner, that's a flight mode enunciator. All right, guys, be patient. I'm going to show you two real-life examples where pilots have gotten themselves into Alpha Floor out on the line. But here, I just want to demonstrate exactly what it looks like. So I'm going to click off the flight directors. I'm going to click off the auto thrust. Uh, I'm going to click off the autopilot. I'm basically just going to bank the airplane and pull back. So the flight augmentation computers are going to recognize I'm going to exceed the critical angle of attack. It's going to go to Alpha Floor. When it goes to Alpha Floor, the thrust will go to Toga. It'll stay there until it gets out of that critical angle of attack, and then it goes to toga lock. And once it's in toga lock, the only way to get out of toga lock, at least on these older models, is to just disconnect the auto thrust. And in this sim demonstration, it takes a lot longer to have the engines go to toga than it does in real life, just an FYI. A couple things to remember with Alpha Floor. Again, it is a mode of auto thrust, but the auto thrust does not have to be on. Uh, the auto thrust could be off, and it's still going to have that protection in there. Now, if you were to hold the auto thrust disconnect buttons for longer than 15 seconds and completely disable the auto thrust system, in that case, Alpha Floor will not be available. But you can have Alpha, you can have the auto throttles, excuse me, auto thrust, it's an Airbus, you can have the auto thrust off and manually controlling the thrust. And if you enter a situation where the, the facts deem it, uh, you're going to exceed the critical angle of attack, the alpha floor will come on up, the engines will spool up regardless of auto thrust being on and regardless of where the auto the thrust levers are. So that's kind of important. So alpha floor is available from liftoff to 100 feet RA and obviously you can't have alpha floor available below 100 feet RA on landing because then you'd never be able to land. And it's also only available in normal law. So if you're in alternate law, it is a, it's not available. All right, how the Airbus gets into alternate law, there's two ways. You can lose a whole bunch of redundant systems. There's a whole combination out there where the airplane will go into alternate law. Or you can force it into alternate law by turning off uh, two out of the three ADRs. It doesn't matter which one you turn off. And here you go, the airplane is in alternate law. It does still have some protections, but the auto thrust and alpha floor are not one of them. And neither is or neither are things like bank angles. So you can go ahead and do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and also you can actually stall the airplane in alternate law as well. Normal law, you're restricted to 67 degrees of bank. In alternate law or direct law, you can go ahead and uh, do a barrel roll if, uh, if you're brave enough. All right, now here comes the stories. Um, and this is a story that I'm not going to say which airline it was, but uh, fly in and out of Atlantic City. Uh, and I, I'm laughing now because I think as pilots, when something happens where you feel like it could have happened to you, but it happened to somebody else, you kind of laugh because you're like, oh, thank, you know, thank God that wasn't me. Everything turned out fine. They just came back around, landed uneventfully. Uh, but it was a good learning lesson for everybody. And, and I know the pilots, so that's kind of why I'm laughing. But... Uh, Imagine you're coming into Atlantic City. Well, the first, let me let me rewind a little bit. Atlantic City was great because not only were you never delayed and you parked your you parked the airplane at the jetway and you're at your car in five minutes, but you would come in from the south and they'd usually say, you know, cross Sea Isle at 8,000, cleared for the visual approach in a 3-1, which is great. So you're at like 15,000 feet, you know, 20, 30 miles out getting cleared for the visual approach, obviously if it was VFR out which was great. Uh, now, you could always tell the Fort Lauderdale or Detroit crews because they'd go out over the ocean and like fly the full approach, even if it was a visual approach and you'd see them out over the water, where the Atlantic City crews would go directly to the final approach fix because we were in and out of Atlantic City all the time, just very familiar with the area. 
shot visual approaches all the time, so no big deal. Now, usually Pristi with the final approach fix is 1,700 feet, but it's a visual approach. So as long as we were um, stable, fully configured, all checklists done by 1,000 feet, we were legal as per company policies and procedures. So uh, usually you would you could do it at 1,700, go right to 1,700, and then have the airplane turn. And the airplane did a great job. Even if you were greater than a 90-degree angle, uh, it would turn and intercept the localizer almost perfectly. It was really, really nice, unless there was like a massive tailwind. Uh, but a lot of times it would capture the glide slope and the localizer at the same exact time, and it was just a little aggressive. So what we normally did, or some crews did as a technique, is you would set 1,500 for Pristi. This way it would intercept the localizer, and then just about when it was rolling out, then it would intercept the glide slope, so just a little bit more comfortable for the passengers. So you come in, you're five miles out, you're 250 knots, whatever it is. You usually roll the speed back to like flat, you know, 180 flaps one. And as you get closer, you start to configure the airplane. Now, if your flaps full in a heavy Airbus with the gear down and you're in managed speed, it's one thing to be going straight. But if you are headed for Pristi and your gear down and flaps full in managed speed, which is target speed at this point, because managed speed is basically just auto thrust based on your flap setting. All right, not to go uh, too far off uh, uh, tangent here, but see where it says activate and confirm the approach. All that's doing is modifying the auto thrust to maintain a speed based on your flap setting. So when you put the flaps to one, the auto thrust is going to reduce the power. So you maintain S and then when you put in flaps two, the auto thrust will be reduced further. So you maintain the F speed. Uh, essentially all that is, is just a schedule based on the flap setting. So in this case, it would basically be target airspeed. Let's say it was a buck 40. When you intercept the localizer, it's going to turn and it's going to do it quickly. And what happened is they, the flight augmentation computer said, hey, you're a heavy airplane. You're at X angle of attack. There's no way you're not going to exceed the critical angle of attack in this bank. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an alpha floor as protection. So as the airplanes just, you know, halfway through the turn, they hit alpha floor. gears down, the flaps are down, and they didn't quite get out of toga lock because when it hits alpha floor, it goes into toga lock. And the only way to get out of toga lock is by the quick disconnect button, not by move. You can move the thrust levers all day long, but you have to hit the disconnect buttons. Otherwise, it's going to stay in toga. And the airplane on the non-NEOs, it doesn't care if you're going to blow through the flap speed. It doesn't care if you blow through the gear speed. It's going to give you toga power. It's going to keep it there even once you exit alpha floor, because once you exit alpha floor, the FMA goes from alpha floor to toga lock. So until you hit those quick disconnect buttons, you got full blast and you better figure out how to disconnect it quickly. But with the newer software on the NEOs, not all of the NEOs, but some of them, once you exit alpha floor, the airplane is not gonna let you exceed any speed. It's gonna revert to whatever auto thrust mode you were in beforehand. So on the NEOs, here's an auto thrust uh, reversion mode chart if you want to look at it. But on the NEOs, they have a, a smart exit for toga lock. And essentially what that is, the airplane's not going to let you overspeed. It'll overspeed the flaps, but it's not going to overspeed VMAX plus four. All right, the next alpha floor event is not on approach. It's more in the terminal area uh, where you would be on a star or getting vectored around. So coming in on a thrust idle open descent, which is essentially the auto thrust is going to go to idle and the airplane is gonna pitch for whatever speed you have in the window. Let's say for example, 250 knots, you have the window set for 3000 feet. You're coming down and air traffic control says, hey, do me a favor, there's traffic 12 o'clock, level off at 4000 feet. And if you're at 4200 feet, you're kind of just close to that altitude, you may not want a, a chance by going below that altitude, so spinning up the window. Uh, you could push the vertical speed knob and the airplane will level off or you could do what a lot of people do is you just click off the autopilot. You keep the auto thrust engaged, but you click off the autopilot. 
So here you are level at, we'll say 4,000 feet with the window set at 3,000 feet and you're still in a thrust idle open descent. So what the airplane thinks you're going to do is descend and you're telling the airplane, hey, I want the thrust to be pulled all the way back to idle because you're descending, you're going to maintain the 250 knots via the pitch of the airplane. But you're leveled off, you're looking around for the traffic and what you may not notice is the speed decaying. And the speeds are going to decay all the way down to the point where years passed when the airplane first came out, the software would allow you to go all the way down to where you would actually hit alpha floor. Now, theoretically, you would think that a pilot would be able to notice this uh, just by their instrument scan or the fact that there's less noise in the cockpit, but the Airbus is pretty, pretty quiet to, to begin with. But maybe they're preoccupied looking for traffic. So anyway, you level off the speed decays to a point where you hit alpha floor. Now, in the newer software, the airplane doesn't do that. Um, they have fixed that. So what it'll do, it'll get down to the top of the VLS, and then it'll revert to speed mode. So it'll go to this, whatever the top of the VLS is, the lowest selectable, the auto thrust will then go to that, and the speed window will go to, you know, 210 knots, whatever it is. Um, so that is, in that case, that's kind of a low speed protection, but you won't see alpha floor now, where in years past, you would see alpha floor. Now, in this case, if you were leveled off and you saw traffic uh, coming right at you and you pulled back really quickly and really hard, uh, the flight augmentation computer would recognize that and potentially then in that case, you could hit alpha floor because the airplane thinks you're gonna exceed a critical angle of attack. All right, let me demonstrate it for you. So right now in the altitude window, we have 6,000 feet. Let's say they give us a descent down to 3,000 feet. So we set 3,000, we pull on that altitude knob for a thrust idle, open descent. The airplane is gonna leave the thrust all the way back at idle and it's gonna pitch for, in this case, 220 knots. Uh, so that's what the airplane is gonna pitch at, maintain 220 knots in the descent. So ATC tells us, hey, there's traffic below you. Do me a favor, level off at uh, immediately. So rather than just push the vertical speed knob, which would level you off, you actually just click off the autopilot and you just hold it there at 5,500 feet. Remember, especially in the Airbus, it trims for you, so it's really no big deal to just click off the autopilot. It'll just stay perfectly trimmed. So you're looking around, looking all over the place. Maybe you're noticing how much room is in the flight deck. Maybe you're staring at your first officer and the airspeed starts to decay all the way down. Now, let's say there's traffic right ahead, right in front of you. So you pull back on the stick really quickly and the sim is just incredibly slow. It would have kicked on way sooner than this. But uh, there you go, there's Alpha Floor that finally comes, so that's what it would look like. Now they changed this early on to where if you were level and you were in open descent and not following the flight director and the speed decayed, it would go to Alpha Floor, but now it reverts to speed mode, which in this case would be the top of the VLS. I have to kind of manually adjust it here, but it would go to whatever that top of the VLS is there, 180 or so. So it's a little different than how they originally had it. This is a much, much better way for have it, uh, having it revert to speed mode. And in some cases, you will get the speed, speed, speed. It's an oral warning. It says speed three times. Sounds very much like this. Speed, speed, speed. That warning only comes if you're 2,000 feet RA or below and can fig two or more. So that's one situation where in years past you would hit alpha floor if you leveled off in a thrust that'll open descent. They fixed that for it to revert to speed mode. However, if you are leveled off in a thrust that'll open descent and you see traffic and you pull back really quickly or do anything that the, the flight augmentation computers uh, deem might lead to exceeding the critical angle of attack, you will get alpha floor in that case. Understanding what the automation did and why it did it, I think is incredibly helpful to, to cruise all over the place. And that's why they share this information and it comes out in like SMS reports and, and all these different literature for us to kind of learn from. So those are just two examples of kind of showing you guys how Alpha Floor works on the Airbus. And, uh, you know, again, it may change, the software may change again in a couple of years once pilots keep doing other things where Airbus is like, hey, let's, let's, let's fix what these idiots are doing. But um, when I say idiots, I don't mean any particular crew, I mean all crews that are that are flying these airplanes. Uh, all right, that's all I got, guys. Thanks. And again, any questions about Alpha Floor, if I confused you even more, or you're curious about any other um, Airbus protection specifically, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. I, I very well may not know it at all, um, but I'll certainly find the answer for you. And I got a lot of friends that are much more um, 
knowledgeable on, on the Airbus systems than myself. But uh, all right, guys, thanks.